So I answer a lot of email on questions from people on various topics, and one common topic I hear about all the time is, is climb milling versus conventional milling. People want to know what this climb milling thing is and why should they be afraid of it and what this conventional milling thing is and how do they do it. And there's just generally a lot of confusion about the two techniques. In reality, though, climb milling and conventional milling are both very useful techniques to the machinist. The trick is just learning how to use them to your advantage and how to prevent them from using you to theirs. So uh, what I'm going to do today is uh, just do a quick demo on what is climb milling and what is conventional milling and go over a little bit over the, the positive points and the negative points of each. And I'll probably even uh, crash a part or two just to show you how, how climb milling in particular can bite you in the ass. So uh, let's get going, uh, make some chips, and hopefully I'll, I'll figure out a way to crash apart without breaking something. That, that's always a challenge, but I think we can work something out. Okay, before we get started here, let's talk about my setup a little bit. Um, I'm using a, a 7 8 diameter four fluid end mill, double end. And as you can see, it's not gripped very well. I'm using a collet to, to hold on to it. And I don't use end mills this large, so I don't really have the proper holder for this big of an end mill. Um, this end mill has what's called a Weldon shank on it. You see it has a flat. That flat's meant for end mill holders with set screws. Okay. Um, normally, the holder would come like all the way down to the, to the flute, so it would be a nice rigid setup. In this case, it won't fit all the way into the collet, so I'm kinda, it's, it's kind of extending farther than it should. But that's actually a good thing in this case, because it... If it's extending farther, it means it's flexible, and I'm going to be doing some nasty things to this cutter, and I'd rather have it flex than break. So uh, that's enough about that. Let's talk about uh, our demonstration here. Here I have a piece of uh, aluminum bar. Okay, let's say I wanted to side mill the end of this bar. This is just a belt sanded surface here. Let's say I wanted to machine it, make it nice and precise. There are two ways I could go about it. I could climb mill it, or I could conventional mill it. Now, what's the difference? Now, let's talk about climb milling first, okay? Climb milling is when you feed the work against the cutter in the direction of rotation, okay? Rotation has, you know, has everything to do with it. In this case, the cutter is rotating clockwise. So if I feed my work against the cutter like this, it's feed, being fed in the direction of rotation of the cutter, okay? And what the cutter is going to want to do when it starts cutting is, is climb up on the on this surface. That's where the, the term climb milling comes from. Okay, now that is both advantages and disadvantages. The advantage is climb milling gives you a much better surface finish. I'll, I'll explain that a little later. But it gives you a good surface finish. The disadvantage is if you try to climb mill, take a heavy cut climb milling on a light machine, you're going to be in trouble because what it's going to do, it's going to bite into the work and it's going to either pull the work out of the vise or it's going to break the cutter. One of the two. Climb milling is generally not a good idea on light machines or heavy cuts. And let me let me demonstrate that. Okay, what it can do. This is a big heavy machine, but I can still get this cutter to grab this metal and pull the table into it. And uh, I'm going to show you how that what that looks like. Now, actually, let me slow this down. It's easier to see when it's going slow. So let's just run it slow. Okay, so let me. Touch the end of the part here. Okay, we'll move in about, uh, oh, I don't know, 80 thousandths. Okay, now watch what happens here when I start feeding with the direction of the cutter taking an 80 thousandths deep cut. Okay, see, it? see the uh, work getting pulled into it and that loud clunk that goes with it. Okay, that's uh, what you're looking at is the part grabbing the work and pulling it. Um, pulling the table toward it from the, uh, it's hard to explain here, from the, the backlash in the lead screw is allowing the table freedom of movement. And the cutter is actually pulling the table independent of the lead screw. Okay? This machine doesn't really care, but if I was using a smaller end mill or a lighter machine, it's, this would cause problems. Okay, so that's that's a that's a negative of uh, climb milling. All right, so let's talk about conventional milling. 
Let's go down here at the other end. Same depth of cut. The difference is we're feeding in the other direction. We're feeding against the rotation of the cutter. Okay, notice you don't see any of that jerkiness. It's not trying to pull the work into it. Okay, it's, what it's trying to do is trying to push the work away, but it can't because there's there's no backlash in the lead screw. It's trying to you can't you know I can't grab it and, and uh, the table is not floating in the, when you're feeding in this direction. You're feeding right directly against the, the screw itself. So this is what you should be doing if you have a light milling machine for heavy cuts. Is conventional milling. bring this thing up to speed. And we should be running, this is like a 7 8 cutter. This should probably be running four or 500 RPM. Okay. So let's finish this up at proper speed here. You can see what one of the disadvantages of climbing on. You can see it leaves a pretty crappy looking finish. Okay. So let's, let's feed this whole thing, clean this whole thing. this entire end of this part. You can see it's a pretty nasty finish. There's chips hanging on it. So now let's say uh, that was that was convention rolling. Now let's uh, move it in another five thousandths and take a, a light finish cut back the other direction. Climb it. Look at the difference. Okay. And that's the advantage of climb milling. It leaves a really nice surface finish. So that's you know that's generally what I do. I'll take a rough cut, conventional milling, and I'll take a finished cut, climb milling. It leaves a it leaves a really really nice finish. Okay, so let's talk about end milling. Um, you know, a machinist always has to be aware of what the cutter, what effect the cutter is going to have when it contacts the work. You know, how it's going to, how it's going to move the, try to move the work. So you always have to keep that in the back of your mind. You can make sure that if you, if you think that, you know, if, you, if the cutter is going to be climb milling for an instant when you start a cut, you have to lock your table down or remove the backlash from your lead screw so it can't grab the table and move it unexpectedly. So you always got to keep that in the back of your mind. Let me show you how climb milling applies when you're end milling instead of side milling. Okay, so let's talk about climb milling and conventional milling as it relates to, uh, to end milling, okay? Let's say I want to end mill the top surface of this part, okay? There are a couple ways I can go about it. I can, I can conventional mill it or I can climb mill it just like I did on the side. Let me show you what the difference is. If I, okay, if I start here on the back side and bring the work toward the cutter, okay, I'm going against the, ro the rotation of the cutter. I'm conventional milling on this back side. Okay, see the cutter's wanting to move the part into it in that direction. Okay? But if I come over on this other side, start that again. If I go to the front side and I mill the same direction, I'm climbing. Oops. If I bring the table up, I'm climbing. Okay, see, now the, the cutter's trying to push the work away from me. Okay, now this, it doesn't seem like much, but I'll tell you what, I, I get a lot of people pointing out when I'm, I'm milling, when I'm squaring up stock, like I had the video out on squaring up stock on the milling machine. I'm constantly getting critiques from people saying, hey, you gotta, you got to use a file and remove those burrs before you 
turn the part over. So this, this, there's all kinds of burrs that you can't you can't set a, a part on a, a burr and expect it to be square. Well, let me explain what's what's going on here. I'm using climb milling to my advantage. Okay. If I climb mill all around the outside of the part like this for my first cut. doesn't create a burr. So I can save myself a lot of time by not having to remove that burr. See, there's nothing there. Okay? Nothing. I mean, normally you, you slice your finger open doing that, but not if you climb low around the outside first. And once you get that, once you get the outside done, then you can go back in the middle and finish up. We have a nice end milled surface with no filing required. So there I'm using climb milling to my advantage. Okay? Alright, now let me show you how climb milling can cause you some major grief. Let me switch setups here. Okay, let's say we have a part clamped in the vise like this, and let's say I want to mill a step in this thing. Say I want to mill a step out of it like that, okay? So we throw the part in the vise, gonna gonna side mill it, okay? I'm just gonna run up against it. it should be an easy thing, right? Well, let's see, let's see how it works out for us. Okay, just touch the front of the part, move in a little bit. I don't know however deep your, your side is. Let's see what happens. Okay, well, what happened is we uh, we just scrapped our part out, okay? Because climb milling caused the end mill to bite into the work, and being gripped sideways in the vise like this, it, it wasn't a very substantial grip, and it moved the part, okay? So what we would have done is, if you used a sm were using a smaller end mill, you probably would have broken your end mill, and we also scrapped the part out. So let's see... Uh, what a better way to do this would be. Okay, first of all, holding a part like this and milling it so that the, the, the end mill wants to move the part sideways is generally not a good idea. Um, you just saw why it's not a good idea for climb milling. I mean, I, I can get away with uh, conventional milling without a problem. If I do the same thing, I come over on this side and I mill against the rotation of the part, it's probably going to be okay. okay? If it does grab, it might move apart a little bit, but it's not going to, it's not going to crash like it did the other way. So then I can come back and take my finished cut the other way. Life's good. Okay? A better way to do this would be to rotate the part this way. Okay, and do your machining on the y-axis instead of the x, okay? And now the, the cutter's trying to push the part against the solid jaw of the vise, and there's no way, no way it can go anywhere. If you take too heavy a cut, it might nudge the part sideways away from the end mill, but it's not going to grab it, and it's not going to, you know, crash on you. So that's, that's a good example of how fine milling can bite you if you're not paying attention. Remember, I said machinist always has to be aware of how the cutter is going to act on the part when it, when it starts cutting. So you got to keep that in the back of your mind. All right, so let me show you. you remember, I, I showed you how uh, climb milling makes a much better surface finish? Let me just explain why that is here. All right, so let's see if I can explain why we get a better surface finish climb milling than conventional milling. Let me do a quick sketch here in my vice dry erase board. Um, this is looking at, at a piece of uh, stock from the top that we're, we're milling. This is our cutter right here. Okay, Cutter rotation is clockwise and the direction of feed is in this direction. 
So we are conventional milling here. Right? Now what happens is when you conventional mill, your cutter starts out with uh, the thickness of the chip is zero where it starts out. Okay? And that's that's where the, the bad surface finish comes from. Your uh, cutter requires a certain amount of pressure on the work before it starts cutting. So before that point, it's just kind of rubbing along the surface and generally just kind of smearing the metal. It's not, it's not cutting it nice and clean. And then as it travels into the work, it, it gets a little more and more pressure on the cutting edge until it starts, until it breaks through the surface and starts cutting. So what you end up with is a chip that starts out with zero thickness and then as the cutter travels and rotates, you end up with a chip that's shaped like this. Okay? Don't forget, we're feeding in this direction and there's more than one flute. So as the cutter travels and rotates, it creates this sort of wedge-shaped wedge chip. So it starts out with zero thickness, ends up with some thickness depending on how fast you're, you're feeding and how fast you're rotating. Okay, this makes a crappy finish because, like, like I said, when at the start of the cut down here, there's zero thickness, zero thick chip thickness, and it just kind of smears the metal. That's why you end up with chips stuck on the on the side of the part when you conventional mill. So now let's take a look at climb milling. Just the opposite. Okay, we've got a, a block or a block of aluminum or steel, or whatever we're cutting here. Okay, we got our cutter like that. Direction of rotation is clockwise, and we're feeding in this direction. We're feeding with the direction of rotation of the cutter. Okay, now as these uh, cutting edges, as these teeth come around with the with the cutter or the work feeding, okay, the start of our cut is thick. Okay, and as the cutter rotates and feeds. The chip gets thinner until it's zero going out, and then it makes a nice. So then it just kind of exits, okay, the, the cutting edge. So we what we end up with here is a nice clean entrance and a nice clean exit of our cutting edge. So we get the same shaped chip, it's just in reverse. We start out with a thick cut, end up with a, with a thin cut. There's none of that smearing going on here because the, the cutter, when it gets to the end of the of the material, it just comes out. Okay, it releases. It doesn't have to build up pressure before it starts cutting like when you conventional mill. So that, that's why you get a better finish. Climb milling over conventional milling. Okay, so that's all I have on that. Just remember, keep your mind going and whenever you, uh, before you ever take a cut on a piece of metal, have it down in your mind what's going to happen, how that cutter is going to interact with the part, and it should keep you out of trouble. Alright, I'll see you next time.